Uh, welcome to today's lecture. Uh, we just want to recall that uh, an important theorem that we had uh, stated in the previous lecture uh, was called Lagrange's mean value theorem. So, just, just have a look at the statement again so that we are able to uh, apply it properly. So, Lagrange's mean value theorem is about a function f which is defined on a closed bounded interval a b to r and it has the following properties. So, we are given that f is a function on a closed bounded interval a b taking values in the real numbers 1 f is continuous on the closed bounded interval a b and f is differentiable on the open interval a b. If these two conditions are satisfied by the function on the closed bounded interval a b then the Lagrange's mean value theorem says there exists a point C belonging to A B such that uh, the difference F B minus F of A is equal to F dash of C into B minus A. We can uh, rewrite uh, the last conclusion uh, in case uh, B is not equal to A as F B minus F of A divided by B minus A equal to F dash of C. So, this is uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem and uh, geometrically it says the following. So, let us look at the picture Lagrange's mean value theorem says that if satisfies those condi two conditions that f is a continuous function on a closed bounded interval a b and differentiable in the open interval a b then there is a point c such that the tangent at that point is parallel to the chord joining that um, points a f of a and b f of b. So, this is a important theorem in calculus which gives us a lot of applications. So, let us look at some applications of Lagrange's mean value theorem. First application says if f is a function on an open interval a b to r and f dash of x if it is differentiable function in open interval a b to r and its derivative is bigger than 0 for all x and f is strictly in, uh, then f is strictly increasing on i b. So, this uh, we are saying that if a function is differentiable in the open interval and its derivative is strictly bigger than 0 then uh, the function is strictly increasing uh, in the interval a b. So, note uh, this is a property of the derivative of the function um, on the whole of interval a b. So, if the derivative is strictly bigger than 0 for all x then it is strictly increasing in a b. And uh, similarly, if f is uh, f dash of x is less than 0 for all x then the conclusion is f is strictly decreasing in a b. And finally, if uh, f dash of x is equal to 0 then f is a constant function. This is a very uh, simple and straightforward application of uh, the mean value theorem. So, let us just look at uh, why this is so. So, uh, we are given the function f on open interval a b to r and we are given f dash of x is bigger than 0. Okay. So, f dash of x is uh, bigger than 0. So, uh, for all for all points Uh, f dash of x is bigger than 0 for all points x belonging to a b. So, we want to show this implies f is strictly increasing in a b. So, let us take uh, let us take two points x 1 x 2 belonging to a b such that x 1 is less than x 2 and we apply Lagrange's mean value theorem in the interval x 1 to x 2. So, that will imply that there exists a point C belonging to x 1 to x 2 such that f of x 1 minus f of x 2 is equal to f dash of c 
into x1 minus x2. Right. So, this is application of Lagrange's mean value theorem. Now, because x1 is less than x2 and f dash of x is strictly bigger than 0, so this implies that the right hand side is bigger than f dash of c is bigger than 0 um, and x1 is less than x2 that means this product is always less than 0. So, implies by the given condition f of x1 minus f of x2 is less than 0 which implies which implies that f is strictly increasing. So, this is uh, the way uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem uh, will be uh, used uh, to prove uh, uh, various conclusions about the function. So, basically what we are saying is if we know something about uh, the derivative of the function, then we can al always deduce some properties about the function itself. Uh, so, in the same way we proved, we proved it for f dash of uh, x bigger than 0. Uh, similar uh, proof will work for f dash less than 0. And the last property is obvious because if the derivative is equal to 0, then f of x 1 minus f of x 2 divided by uh, is equal to f dash of c which is equal to 0. So, uh, the simple application of uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem uh, will not uh, really uh, um, uh, go deep into the proofs we will see how these things can be applied. So, here is uh, the uh, visualization of uh, um, this uh, last theorem. Uh, we have, so this is, this is function, this is the graph of the function and you look at uh, the ta tangent at any point. So, uh, on the left side the tangent will be uh, like this. Uh, uh, so, the slope of the tangent will be um, uh, negative. Right, because the angle will be more than 90 degrees. So, uh, the slope of uh, any uh, so at tangent and at any point will have a, a negative slope that means the derivative is negative on this part of the uh, graph. So, function will be decreasing that as we can see from the graph also. And on the on the, on the right hand side as uh, uh, we cross this flat uh, part of the graph here that uh, in this graph the derivative is equal to 0 actually um, that means uh, the tangent is horizontal. And as we go from left to right uh, the slope uh, increases and uh, as a result you see that the function also is increasing. So, uh, this is the way uh, interpretation of uh, the derivative being positive implies the function is increasing and the derivative uh, negative implies the function is decreasing is applied. So, now let us uh, recall, uh, let us uh, apply this uh, tool to marginal analysis. Uh, let us just recall that uh, the marginal uh, of a function was defined as uh, the slight increase change in uh, the dependent variable when the independent variable changes by one unit. So, for a, uh, if the demand function demand and the price functions are related by Q is equal to A into P raised to power B where A and B are constants. So, Q is the demand, P is the price. Then uh, uh, we had defined what is called the elasticity of demand of the price and uh, we had defined it uh, for general functions and for this function we have computed in, an, in one of our earlier lectures and we showed that it is equal to B for all P. So, elasticity of demand for every price was the constant and that constant was equal to B for uh, this uh, function. So, for such a, a product the total revenue, so let us calculate the total revenue uh, uh, for, uh, for such a product where the demand is related with price this way. So, total revenue is uh, defined as uh, the price into the quantities P Q. So, P into Q uh, the demand, so that is uh, the total revenue. So, it is A into uh, the prob, uh, proper the definition of Q is A into P raised to power B. So, we put that. So, this is A into P raised to power B plus 1. So, that is the total uh, revenue. So, thus the marginal of total revenue 
will be uh, the derivative, right? So that was the definition of a marginal of a function, namely the derivative of the function at that point. So marginal of uh, uh, the total revenue as a function of uh, p will be de de derivative of total revenue with respect to p and that will be marginal of revenue. So that will be equal to a into uh, b uh, p plus 1 the power comes down into p raised to power b plus 1 minus 1 so that is p raised to power b. So marginal of revenue uh, turns out to be a into b plus 1 into p raised to power b. So now let us, uh, uh, so for the, if, so if the demand function is this, then we just now uh, saw that the marginal is given by this. So um, what does this imply? So let us look at the constant b, if b minus 1, okay, depending on b minus 1, the marginal will be positive or negative. So if b is less than minus 1, if b is less than minus 1, then this quantity marginal revenue will be uh, <coughs> negative because this b plus 1 uh, will be b plus 1 will be a negative quantity. So that will imply that the marginal of revenue is less than 0. So what does this Im, uh, have implication? It says the total re revenue as a function of the price will uh, decrease. The marginal of the revenue is negative. So there will be a decrease marginal of revenue is the derivative of the revenue. So that says that the revenue will decrease as the price will, uh, in, uh, the total revenue as a function of price will decrease. So revenue will decrease as uh, there is a, there is a increase in the price. So it's a decreasing function. So if b is uh, uh, equal to minus one, that means this will be equal to zero. So then uh, in that case, uh, the total revenue uh, will be independent of the price, it will stay stationary, right? The marginal uh, of revenue will be 0, so there will be total revenue is independent of the price. And in case it is bigger than minus 1, so the total revenue as a function of price will increase. So uh, depending on uh, this, um, uh, for this kind of uh, demand related with price, depending on the P, uh, the con co constant B. If B is less than minus 1, then total revenue, uh, uh, to, if B is less than 1, total revenue will decrease. If B is equal to minus 1, the total revenue will stay stationary. If B is bigger than minus 1, then the uh, <coughs> total revenue as a function of the price will increase. So that is the way we interpret uh, the notion of uh, marginal uh, with respect to uh, the total. So, uh, let us also recall that the total revenue uh, as we have seen earlier also is given by P into Q. So, uh, so this implies that the marginal of revenue if we differentiate this is D, uh, now we are going to differentiate with respect to demand. Earlier we differentiated with respect to price, now marginal of revenue with respect to demand we are going to calculate in this. So, uh, if <coughs> TR is equal to PQ, so if we uh, find the derivative of uh, total revenue that will be marginal of the revenue. So on the right hand side this P into Q where uh, P is a function of Q. So function of a function is a product function, so we apply the chain rule to find the derivative. So derivative of total revenue with respect to Q will be product function. So it will be Q into derivative of P dP by dQ plus the derivative of uh, uh, PQ with respect to Q. So that will be 1, so that is P. So using the product rule and the chain rule, the derivative uh, MR, the marginal of revenue that is the derivative of TR is the derivative of the right hand side. So product rule gives you it should be equal to Q into dP by dQ plus P. If we take B out common, so that is 1 plus Q by P into dP by dQ. Here we are taking P in the denominator because price is always going to be positive, it is not going to be 0, so there is no problem in that. So now uh, once it is so, we can just uh, simplify this a bit further, so it is P into 
this we can take it in the denominator. So, is 1 over dq by dp uh, into uh, p by q. So, here we are using uh, the here we are using the formula that uh, uh, for the inverse function right uh, dp by dq uh, is equal to uh, 1 over dq by uh, dp. So, that uh, uh, is used do not uh, mistake is as as if we are treating fractions. We are using the derivative of the inverse function formula here to write this term as this. Well, so, basically the idea is that if you can either treat p as a function of q or a q as a function of p. So, um, you can treat one as uh, inverse of uh, the other from that relation. So, we are assuming that whatever is the demand and um, the price relation that is uh, a invertible function. So, this is possible. And now, this is a formula for coefficient of elasticity of demand. So, it we put that value here. So, it is p into 1 plus 1 over epsilon d. So, we get a, a formula that marginal of revenue is nothing but uh, is equal to p times 1 plus 1 over coefficient of elasticity of demand. So, since pi a p is always bigger than 0, so that gives us that marginal of a revenue will be bigger than 0 if 1 plus 1 over epsilon d is bigger than 0. So, this is from the previous relation. Uh, let us just go back and see. So, marginal of revenue will be bigger than 0, p is always bigger than 0. So, if this quantity is bigger than 0. So, a marginal of revenue is bigger than 0 gets related with uh, the coefficient of elasticity that marginal of revenue is bigger than 0 if and only if 1 plus 1 over coefficient of elasticity of demand is bigger than 0. So, uh, as norm, uh, in our problems we have seen earlier uh, the coefficient of elasticity of demand is a negative quantity always. So, this means uh, that marginal of revenue will be bigger than 0 if and only if 1 plus 1 over epsilon d is bigger than minus 1 right is 1 plus. So, if this quantity is bigger than minus 1 that is epsilon d is less than minus 1. So, marginal of a revenue is bigger than 0 gets related with the coefficient of elasticity of demand uh, in this way. So, marginal of revenue is positive if and only if coefficient of elasticity of demand is less than minus 1. And we had earlier seen in simple examples that the coefficient of elasticity of demand less than minus 1 means it is very uh, uh, the rela relationship uh, between price and demand is very elastic. And that is reflected here the marginal of revenue is uh, bigger than 0. So, marginal of revenue will be increasing if coefficient of elasticity of demand is uh, less than uh, minus 1. So, because marginal of revenue positive means that the revenue will be an increasing function. So, revenue will be an increasing function uh, if and only if epsilon uh, this coefficient of elasticity of demand is less than minus 1. So, that is a conclusion of uh, this. So, that means revenue will rise if epsilon d is less than minus 1. So, upshot of this analysis is the, the following right. So, the revenue marginal of revenue positive means revenue will be rising it will be increasing if epsilon d is less than minus 1. So, uh, let us look at uh, some more properties of uh, uh, functions which uh, are applicable in uh, economics, commerce and management. So, for a function in an open interval a b to r a point c belonging to a b is called a point of local maxima. So, the property of c is being defined is it is called a point of local maxima if f of c is bigger than f of x for all x uh, in a interval c minus delta to c plus delta uh, around c. That means, locally uh, in a neighborhood of the point c uh, f of c is the value f of c is uh, bigger than uh, f of x for all x in that interval. So, in that interval uh, the function uh, value is the largest. So, then we say it is a local maximum and similarly we define a point C to be a point of local minimum if f of C is less than or equal to f of x 
for all x between c minus delta to c plus delta. So, uh, local behavior of the function we are analyzing that we are saying a point c uh, on an open interval is called a point of uh, local maxima if locally the function is bigger than or equal to uh, the value of the function at the point c is bigger than or equal to all values at nearby points and similarly it is called local minimum if the value at c is less than or equal to uh, f of x for all points is uh, in neighborhood of the point. So, the local maximum and uh, local minimum. So, in a sense uh, if you look at the picture the graph of the function uh, will look like there is a peak at the point c uh, if I look at a nearby points and this is there is a, a bottom out uh, kind of scenario if uh, this uh, is a local minimum. So, what we want to do is uh, find the criteria in terms of uh, the derivative of the function which will help us to analyze whether a point c is a point of local maximum or local minimum. So, in a, you can call this as the turning points for the uh, graph of the function because if you look at the picture uh, the graph will look like as follows. So, uh, if, if this is a point c then if in a neighborhood c minus delta to c plus delta if we look at all points nearby and this is the value of the function at this point then in that neighborhood what we are saying is the value of the function. So, the graph uh, should look like this the value at this point f of c should be bigger than or equal to f of x for every x belonging to x minus delta to x plus delta. So, this is a kind of a peak. So, graph uh, there is a turn is going up and then it starts turning down if you look at the uh, neighborhood of the function uh, value of the function at the point c in a neighborhood. Similarly, if you look at uh, uh, if there is a delta such that uh, in this uh, interval c minus delta to c plus delta uh, we can say that the value of the function. So, this is the graph will look like uh, uh, sorry the graph will look like let us say uh, uh, like this. So, this is the value at the point c. So, that means f of c will be uh, f of c is bigger than or equal to f of c is less than or equal to f of x for every x belonging to c minus delta to c plus delta. So, if I look at any point x here the value is this value or if I look at x then the value is this value which is bigger than or equal to and if I look at this way then the value here it is less than the value at this point right. So, here the value is this and here the value is this value. So, that is what local maxima minima say and graphically this means that there is a turning or um, uh, these are turning points for the local maxima minima or you can say there is a peak and there is a bottom out for the function at that point. So, this is the definition of local maxima and local minima. So, we would like to know uh, when can we say uh, if we know some property about the derivative of the function then the function will have a local maxima or a local minima. So, uh, the first result is uh, uh, saying that if c is a point of local maxima or a local minima and f dash of c exists then f dash of c should be equal to 0. So, this is uh, a, if the function has a derivative at that point and so what we are saying is if the derivative exists. So, if this is the function and this is the point c and this is the value f of c if at this point the function has uh, derivative that means in a neighborhood c minus delta to c plus delta the function will be defined because derivative implies it is a continuous function. So, the graph is a continuous function and if the graph looks like this that means f of c is a point of if c is local maxima then what should happen? Then the uh, tangent at that point should be horizontal 
right? The tangent at this point should be horizontal. And similarly, if uh, at a point C, the uh, it is a minimum. So let us say uh, the, it is a minimum at some other point. So let us say at this point there is a minimum. So graph goes like this, and at this point there is a minimum. So in a neighborhood of that point, uh, the function is continuous. The function is continuous at that point, so it is defined at all points. And derivative exists at that point again implies that the derivative is horizontal. So that is what this theorem is saying. That will not prove this theorem, but we'll just uh, use this. Uh, this is uh, intuitively uh, the motivation for the theorem, namely if. Uh, f is defined on an interval a b to r and c is a interior point, c is a point inside the interval a b. Then uh, if at this point c is a point of local maxima or local minima either of it uh, then uh, and the derivative exists then the derivative must be 0. So that means that a point of local maxima or minima if the tangent can be defined mathematically saying the function has a derivative then the derivative must be equal to 0. So, this is a necessary condition for uh, local maxima or minima so, because necessary in the sense that mathematically these are very important theorems which gives you necessary conditions that if there is a point of local maximum or a local minimum and derivative exists. So, if local maxima minimum exists and the function is differentiable then the derivative is equal to 0. So, that uh, is used uh, in a way that if you want to locate the possible points where the function can have a local maxima or a mini minima, then the necessary condition being derivative is 0. So, look at the function, look at all the values where the function has derivative equal to 0, then these are the interior points possibly where the function can have local maxima or minima. So, this gives you the possible candidates. So, this is how this theorem will be used. So, uh, in the next lecture we will analyze how uh, we will locate uh, points of uh, local maxima minima out of these candidates, how do we decide which points are local maximum and which points are local minima. So, we will look, look into this property in the next lecture. Thank you.